Okay, welcome back class. So let's go ahead and we're going to perform our Lab 5 Managing and Maintaining DHCP. And this is going to be a fairly quick lab. Uh, we're going to install the DHCP role on our Server 1. We're going to configure what's called split scopes, DHCP failover, and name protection, way to help secure our DHCP. So let's go ahead and jump into our exercises. So understand DHCP has been included with Windows for years and it's included with Windows Server 2016 as a server role. Starting with Windows Server 2012, DHCP supports failover capability. In Active Directory domain service environments, Domain joined Windows DHCP servers must be authorized to service DHCP client requests. By forcing DHCP servers to be authorized, clients are protected from rogue domain joined Windows DHCP servers that might maliciously affect network clients. So it's a, it's a way to help secure our network. So I'm um, on LUN DC1 right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to LUN Server 1. And I'm not connected to it. Oh, there we go. I'm, if, it's, if you don't have your connection screen, go ahead and hit the Power On button if it says that. But I'm going to just go ahead and press Control Alt Delete. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log in with my P, capital PA11WORD. And we're going to add the DHCP role over here. So I'm going to click Add Roles and Features on our wizard screen next, Role Based next, Server Name next, and I'm going to select DHCP Server. We're going to add our features. We're going to click Next. Under Features, simply click Next under DHCP server, click next. Under confirm installation, click install. So we're going to wait for that installation to finish. Once it does show as being completed, you're going to take a screenshot and paste that into step number 10. Okay, well that took about a minute. So let's go ahead and make sure you get your screenshot and paste that into step 10. And you can go ahead and you're going to click close. Now if you look up here at the top we can go ahead and we can click to complete DHCP configuration. We're going to click next. We're going to use our administrator credentials and we're going to click commit and close. Our installation of DHCP is now authorized. A little bit different way of doing it than going Tools, DHCP, which is where we're going to go anyhow. We, but we could have right clicked on here on our server and said Authorize. Right now our choice would be to unauthorize, but we don't need to do that. We've already authorized it. So let's go ahead and expand our window for our DHCP manager. Make it a little bit more user friendly there. And once you see this right here, if you've got green check marks, go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step number 16. Okay, you've gotten your screenshot. Exercise 5.1 is done. We've installed DHCP. So in 5.2, we're going to be configuring what's called split scopes. For years, if you wanted to have high availability, you would use a split scope configuration, also known as the 80-20 configuration. Split scope configuration uses two DHCP servers with the same scopes and options on both. However, the scopes have complementary exclusion ranges so that there's no overlap in the address, addresses they lease clients. 
So in other words, because you don't want to have two servers distributing the same address to different clients. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back over to DC1. And I'm going to open up my DHCP console. We're going to bring it back up, open a little bit bigger, make it a little bit more user, user friendly. I'm going to select my server. And I'm going to right click under IPv4 and select new scope. On the wizard screen, I'm going to click next. And I'm going to call it split scope. Rather descriptive, right? I'm going to click next. And for my IP address range, in the starting IP text box, I'm going to type in 192.168.2.2. For the end, we're going to do 192.168.2.254. You'll notice that because we typed in a 192 address, our subnet automatically configured itself for a class C. We're going to leave it just like that. We're going to click next. Exclusions and delay, click next. Lease duration, click next. Under configure options, click next. Under router, we're going to type in 192.168.2.1. You remember we started our range at .2. That's why we didn't have to add this as an exclusion. We're going to click Add, and we're going to click Next. Under Domain Name and DNS, click Next. Wins, click Next. Activate the scope, click Next, and Finish. And there is our split scope ready to be set up. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm, then I'm going to right click on it, choose Advanced, Split Scope. So now, under the wizard where it tells us a little bit about it, we're going to go ahead and we already talked about this, how it increases fault tolerance. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click Next. And it says, hey, what is your additional DHCP server? Remember, it needs to have at least two, right? So we're going to click Add Server. And, well, this, we're going to say, we're going to say we can add or we could say this authorized server. Let's go ahead and follow the instructions. They say browse and I'm going to type in lun-svr1 and I'm going to click OK and there it is. And I'm going to click OK. So there's my additional server that's been added in. There's my DC1 with its IP address. So right now I can click Next and you'll see the 8020 has already been assigned. So question number one, what is the default percentage split between the host DHCP server and the added DHCP server? 8020. So 80% of the available IPs, the host DHCP server will hand out and the remaining 20% will be assigned for your secondary DHCP server to hand out. So go ahead and once you've answered your question go ahead and click Next. On the delay set the delay to 500 milliseconds on the added server. 500. Zero, zero. That way this the added server delays in wanting to do anything. We click next. We can see a synopsis of our set of our settings. So once you see this, go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step number 25. If you've gotten your screenshot, let's go ahead and go we're going to click finish. And I apologize, this is the screenshot that we want. We want to see all these successfuls. This is your screenshot for step 25.
Okay, so if you've gotten that screenshot, we're going to go and we're going to click close. And we're done with exercise 5.2. If I go back over to server 1 and I refresh our view, look there. It's not active right now, but it's already been configured for us. Okay, so DHCP failover, exercise 5.3. So starting with Windows Server 2012, DHCP can replicate lease information between two DHCP servers for the IPv4 scopes and subnets. If one DHCP server fails or becomes overloaded, the other server services the clients for the entire subnet. Let's switch back to our DC1 and we're going to right click on IPv4 and choose new scope. On the wizard we're going to click next and we're going to aptly name it failover scope. Actually they're not putting a, a space there so I won't either. We're going to click next on our start IP address range, we're going to use the range of 192.168.3.2. For the ending range, we're going to do 192.168.3.254. We're going to leave it set as a class C and press next. Exclusions and delay, click next. Lease duration, click next. For configure options, click next. For our router address, we're going to put in 192.168.3.1. We're going to do add and click next. Domain name and DNS, click next. Win servers, click next. And activate scope, click next. And finish. And we're done creating what we're going to be using as our sl split scope or our failover scope. Now, we're going to right click on failover scope and we're going to select configure failover. So there's our scope that's going to be selected. On the failover wizard screen on the introduction to DCP failover, DHCP failover, answer the following question and, and then we'll click next. So what scope is available for DHCP failover? It's there, grayed out. It's right there. There's your answer. You're done with, with question two. And okay, so we click next. Now we need to specify a partner server to use for failover. So in our box, there's nothing there yet. We're going to type in LUN dash. SVR1. We're going to click next. And now we're on the create new failover relationship page. Let's answer the next question. What is the default load balancing percentage? Well, it's right here in the middle of your screen. Load balancing per percentage 50-50. For our shared secret, we're going to type in capital P A dollar dollar W zero R D. We're going to follow just the same thing in our set, in our instructions. And we're going to click next. What is the default load? Okay, I apologize for that. I had uh, a person at the door I needed to answer. Uh, so on the previous screen, we added in the shared secret of capital P A dollar dollar W zero R D and we click next. So we are on our configure failover screen with a number of settings here. So question three is, our, what is the default load balance percentage, which is 50-50?
And question four is what is the default failover mode? It's right in the middle of your screen. What does mode say? Yes, load balancing. Load balance. Question number four, what is the default failover mode? Load balance. Okay, this is gonna be your screenshot for step 17. So go ahead and get your screenshot pasted in there. And once you've got your screenshot, go ahead and click finish. We are successful. We're good to go. We click close. Let's do our challenge, which is configuring DHCP name protection. So understand if an organization uses only Windows systems that are part of an Active Directory domain, each computer will have its own unique computer name which DHCP registers in DNS on behalf of the client. Remember, this is because we're all Active Directory integrated. The concept of name squatting is when a non-Windows based computer registers a name in DNS that is already registered to a Windows based computer. To prevent non-Microsoft systems from overwriting systems that use static IP addresses, Windows Server 2012 introduced DHCP name protection to prevent these conflicts. It's a security principle. So here is our question number five. Where can you enable DHCP name protection? Well, if I have a my IPv4 node, I can right click on it. We can set it for a specific at the nodes or for a specific scope. That's how we that's where we do it. If we go to properties under nodes, under my node, if we go to a scope, if you if you there, let's go, let's go back again I'm gonna to go to IPv4 I'm gonna right click I'm gonna to go to left click on properties I'm gonna select DNS because remember it, it has to do with how it writes to DNS so here's where, where it's at DHCP name protection right so let's take a look at it from the scope perspective as well if I go to properties and go to DNS see okay so there's your answer for question number five from the IPv4 or IPv6 node or from an individual scope you can enable DHCP name protection. In this case we're going to right click on IPv4 we're going to go to properties we're going to go to DNS and we're going to select configure and it's as simple as putting a checkbox enable name protection Before you do anything else, go ahead and grab a screenshot of this and paste it into step number five. Once you've gotten your screenshot, go ahead and click OK and click OK. Name protection is now enabled and we are done. I hope you enjoyed this nice short lab and we will see you again in lab six.